Those who have worked at Disney World, what behind-the-scenes stories do you have that the public doesn't see? NSFW. Till Disney is not the most magical place on Earth after all. If you hear an announcement over the park-wide sound system looking for a specific person, it is something very important. Announcements like that have a chain of approval before Disney will allow the magic illusion to be broken. But it's not always bad news like informing families of a death. I've done several park announcements to find someone to inform them an organ donation was matched, a medical courier was on their way to Orlando, and they needed to get to the hospital ASAP. It was always startling when you heard the park pago up for something other than a good news, arts and crafts time has been extended for four hours today. Monorail pilot here. People have sex on the Epcot monorail at night a lot and act like we don't know. We always know. Hypothetically could I do this though and not get banned? Asking for a friend. Former Maelstrom cast member who said you'd get banned? Who are we to say that you can't make a bit of your own magic? I think I've left a comment similar to this before, but I briefly trained for Kilimanjaro safaris at Disney World. At one point on the ride, you go over a bridge with crocodiles underneath. As I was riding with no one in the truck other than my trainer, she felt free to tell me that if anyone were to stand up and fall into the crocodile pit, I was to drive away immediately so that others wouldn't have to see the carnage or try to rescue the person. The crocodiles are apparently fed from that bridge, and anything that drops from there is food to them, and they are surprisingly fast. Also, Divine had a mouth on her. So what happens if a family is being escorted over the bridge and say, the daughter falls over the side? You just rush the family over the bridge and then explain to them once you drive them away that their daughter is gone? Does anyone actually go try to help? Well, you rush the family away and explain that they now get free passes for life. Everyone in the call centers is given a stage name, so no two agents have the same name to the guests. Most, er, unique stage names I can remember. Cotton, Casper, Arizona, Lucinda when you're in training they give you a selection of like 20 names to choose from, so you better hope you're one of the first ones to pick, so you can get a normal name, and not get stuck with Cotton FFS. Definitely wouldn't pick Cotton. Pretty sure they didn't have a choice about picking Cotton. Not an employee, but I have an interesting story about Disney. When I was seven, I went to Disney World. The third night we were there, I rolled out of my bed and cut my forehead on the nightstand. My mom came over to comfort me, not knowing I was bleeding quite profusely. She turned the light on when I wouldn't stop crying, she said it looked like a murder had taken place. Paramedics were called, and the room was swarming with what I can only assume were Disney employees. After I was evaluated and patched up, I was taken to the gift shop around 2 a.m. with my mom and an employee. I got to choose three toys at no cost to my family. It was pretty incredible to be in the completely abandoned gift shop and being told I could have anything. When we returned back to the room 25 minutes later, all the blood was cleaned up, guardrails were put on my bed, and a large basket of candy and other sweets were left on a table. Disney doesn't play around with customer service. On our family trip to Disney World, I was leaning over a railing looking down into some water. A few unreachable feet below I spot a tiny, 1.5 feet to 2 feet, alligator. Being from Africa and relatively unfazed with a slightly sharp swimming lizard thought nothing of it. I called my mother over and said look an alligator. How cool. Sweet Jesus was this a mistake. Not two seconds later, ears everywhere man, a staff member was looking over the railing whispering on the radio. All hell broke loose in the most hushed professional way ever. We were escorted away on a golf cart, and a huge section of the park was cordoned off. We were taken to a room where they were very apologetic for our negative experience and offered us a free day VIP the works. So we said very a big thank you and took what was offered. In future I will be smuggling other small harmless creatures in for free stuff. I also got stuck on the Big Thunder Mountain right in Paris, that was handled in a much more French way, Je suis désolé blows smoke and face TLDR Disney World plus tiny alligator being all chill equals free stuff. I worked on the great movie right in Hollywood studies for a while, and I can tell you all 22 minutes of your friendly tour guide's speech is scripted to the very last letter. 
You get 3 days to learn your whole monologue, and all of the speeds controls stops goes of the actual ride, before going live as a tour guide. Most of those 3 days is spent in a room with your trainer reciting your script until you get every word right. If you accidentally say the word OK instead of alright, you start over from the beginning. Most tedious 3 days of my life. There's also one button on every car that, despite being really close to buttons you have to touch all the time, if pushed gets you fired immediately. I worked a cash register in Tomorrowland. A guy had a heart attack and died about 10 feet from me. I called it in as soon as I saw, but they already knew about it. I went on break shortly afterward and saw the family, literally behind the scenes, crying their eyes out. That never happens. Guests are never allowed behind the scenes, except when somebody dies, I guess. Really kind of heartbreaking. On a positive note, they all got lifetime passes. You heard it here first boys, get a loved one to die in a Disney park for a quick backstage access and some lifetime passes. I worked at Splash Mountain. Sometimes we had guests decide it was a great idea to hop out of the log because they didn't want to write anymore. Well we know about that, every time. The ride is littered with motion sensors, pressure pads, the like. I have a photographic memory of the ride layout, and even I wouldn't be able to avoid being detected out of the log. The flashers don't happen very often, actually it's usually men with their shirts off. In this case their ride photo is blanked out and they can't purchase it. We always had parents trying to sneak kids who didn't mean the height requirement. I do remember we had one family who kept trying for hours, thinking that the cast don't talk to each other about problematic parents. Right evacuations were always interesting. But as long as you were strong and confident with the guests, they always listened. It's real important to walk them through what's going to happen and let them know you've done this more than enough times. I also teased them that they were going to get a backstage tour, but it was gonna be real brief. And as long as they didn't take pictures, they'd get a fast pass for their troubles. Every day was an event, but I loved every minute of it. I have an autistic cousin and once and while we were riding the Pirates of the Caribbean ride it broke down. My cousin flipped out and Disney security literally appeared out of the walls. They took us into the back tunnels and into a freight elevator. Before we knew it were back outside. They were awesome in helping calm him as well. When I was four, I cried in the haunted mansion. Same thing happened, some really nice cast members appeared in that hallway where all the paintings move and escorted my uncle and me out. Now every time I go to Disney my family messes with me the whole time. Are you ready for the haunted mansion? Sure it's not too scary it's okay if you cry. A friend of mine told me that the rules for workers at the European Disneyland were so so strict that they took to calling it Mausichwitz. When management got wind of this they were told that anyone found using that name again would be fired. Apparently it was only a couple of hours before they were calling it Duckow. My cousin worked at Disney in the 90s. I haven't heard a lot of his experience, but I have been told that the cable that Tinkerbell flies down to the castle on once snapped and she got a massive settlement and Snow White gave him crabs. I need to talk to him more often. Interesting guy. Like, comment, and share. Reddit Story Topper. Subscribe now.